Glory to God. <laughs> turn to someone and tell them this is your day. Come on, turn to someone and tell them this is your day. This is your day. And the other person. This is your day. <laughs> Lift your hands up and get another drink, will you? Thank you, Master. Oh, Papa, fill us, dress us, possess us. <laughs> yes. And reconnect us, Papa. Reconnect us in that realm with you. In Jesus' name. You know, the enemy does not want you to cross over. When things become a ritual, it's because you've not crossed over enough or you've taken, you've missed too many opportunities to cross over. See, so when people are worshiping, they're going, oh, the, the enemy's going, you know what, we're doing the same thing again. Well, that's how God sets things up. There was a process of going through the tabernacle to get the most holy place. See, but you won't allow it to be a ritual if you know it's awaiting you. Does everybody get it? When you know it's awaiting you, you don't care. I'm diving in. I'll kick the stinking door in. I'm diving into the throne room of God and to his feet till he touches me. And if he doesn't come down to get me, I'm coming up to get him. See, what we want to do, and this is what daddy loves the best. It's when he shows up because he says, I couldn't resist. I can't resist. I've come to give you a kiss from heaven because I could not resist. This is what we want. We want to worship him until he comes and touches you. Till he comes and fills you. Till he brings you over on the cross. And you get that revelation. You are different. You are new. You're refreshed. You're renewed, man. You're ready to kick butt on a devil. And you have a new breath. It's fresh. Everything is new. It's gone. Old is gone. Everything's new now. It's because you cross over. But when you haven't crossed over enough, it becomes ritualistic. And you can't honor and respect the presence of God. Those things begin to get stolen. And the only thing a person's looking at is themselves. How they feel. And nah, nah, nah. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I, 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 yay, yay. See, understand without a crossover. You become human again. It's only in the crossover that you're no longer human. You have a human body, but you ain't human. You're eternal and you're dangerous to the enemies of God. If you don't cross over, you're dangerous to yourself and everyone else. You become a reactor instead of a responder. Hallelujah. Woohoo. I have a message from the Lord. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1. <laughs> ah. Never gets old, that song. Never gets old. Man, I could worship you forever. We're going to. You might as well get used to it now. <laughs> thank you, Master. <clears throat> um, thank you. Mm -hmm. Genesis one twenty six. Let's speak it, please. Then God said, "Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea." Over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. 
In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. There's just something very important about this. And as the Holy Spirit was bringing me through this, he said, you know, I want people to be, uh, because we are at such a time of a prophetic release. Things are happening. The things that have been spoken about in the book of Revelation are being released. Okay. I'm not saying seals are being released because the seal doesn't have to be broken for things to be released. Hello? But we are in a prophetic time of release. There's things that are God's time and things that are what we call legal time. And, and in this time that we're at right now, God is trying to get his children to have a prophetic view. Everyone say prophetic view. It's a prophetic view of things so that you see things prophetically. In fact, the word of God here says, he's, when Jesus said, let us make man in our image, that means in our view. Everyone say in his view. In other words, how he views things is how he wants me and you to get. So it says that he made, um, he made man in his own image, in, in, in the image of God he created. In other words, in his view. In his view. God created man in his image or in his view. Likeness in his view. Amen. Now go to verse something. Verse 9. Verse 9. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and gathered together of the waters he called seas. And God what? Saw or he what? Viewed. Amen. And he said it was what? It was good. So God has a view. It's called a prophetic view. Because he sees all things through. Amen? And he wants to get his children where they're able to have a prophetic view. Now, much of the world is in despair because they have no idea of prophetic revelation that has been released already. Does everybody understand it? In other words, if you don't know about the things of prophecy, it's hard to have a prophetic view. We know that the rapture is coming. We know about the seven. See, the seven feasts of the Lord all are all prophetic releases from God. And only he can fulfill those feasts. Amen? Those seven feasts. So for me and you, we know that the next feast to be fulfilled is the feast of trumpets, which is the rapture. But in that, certain things must be fulfilled before the rapture. Amen? So there's a prophetic view that we are looking for all the time. Well, see, the world doesn't have that because they have no idea. In fact, most of the Christians don't have that because they don't know what the heck's going on. They've been blinded. They have no prophetic view. The only view they have is what short-sightedness is. And it keeps them in a place of bondage. It keeps them in a place of survival and not surrender. They're looking to gain and they have a hard problem, have a hard time to give because survival brings fear. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. So here it is, God, from his own, and here's another, let's see if I can get this here. Everybody has an imagination, amen? It's called the image. It is a window used by God. That, that window must be pure. Your conscience Amen? Must be pure. It says having a pure conscience. Does everybody understand that? So in this, your conscience is associated with your image. The things that you see, not physically see, your imagination is known as an image. It's, it's a part of a viewing port that God has created in me and you to utilize. So he can speak to us in a more fullness than just by words. I mean, everybody ever hear a picture's worth of what? A thousand words? Amen. So in this view, it's a prophetic view, God can speak to me and you. He can tell you things to come, but the, he uses your image, your viewing window called the imagination. In God's image, in his own image, in his own imagination, his viewing, he sees it and it comes to pass. Boom, it's done. 
Somebody get it? So when he sees something, he speaks. Holy Spirit moves. The Father thinks. Amen. The Word speaks. And the Spirit moves. And that's how everything is in operation. So when we lose or do not enter in that place of a prophetic view, we become complacent. We become lazy. We begin to compromise. We begin, the world begins to creep in more and more and more. And then there's other desires. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh comes and begins to take over areas. Fear, anxiety, stress begin to take over areas. Then there's a false fulfillment. There's a false perception. And then there brings a false reality. Hello, we go right back to that again. Isn't that the enemy's ploy? To keep us in a different reality to compare to what true reality is? Go to Romans 8, or Romans 1, I'm sorry. Are we okay? Okay, so there's a place where we call prophetic view. So we must maintain a prophetic view of things. And not be distracted with a physical view. Don't get me wrong, a physical view is important for the physical, but we need a prophetic view to keep us rolling and moving and connected. That doesn't mean we get granola, new, uh, you know, nutty and stuff like that. It's got nothing to do with it. It's allowing you to see prophetically, a view the way God views things. Verse, um, Romans 1, 18, let's speak it. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. So God has shown it to them, right? For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they were without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became full of futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the corruptible God into what? An image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Now, they became corrupted and defiled because the truth was exchanged for a false image. Does everybody get it? So their prophetic view, now he said they knew the truth, they knew everything about it, they knew God's attributes, and they chose to reject it. They were without excuse. Something happened. Their prophetic view of things were exchanged for carnal view. They no longer saw spiritually, they saw more physically. And they began to do something. They began to create in their own images. And they viewed things in a demonic view of deception. See, the enemy is going to always try and exchange God's character for his character. There's always an exchange he's trying to bring. He's trying to get your human man to overtake your new man. What keeps you, keeps you straight in line in divine order is maintaining a prophetic view. Now again, without a prophetic view, you begin, your restraints of the flesh begin to re get removed because revelation brings prophetic view. Is everybody okay? And that revelation comes from God, comes from Jesus, comes from the Spirit. He's always releasing some kind of revelation, a prophetic view for me and you to keep us connected. It keeps us hungry and thirsty. It keeps us on fire. We don't become lazy, complacent. We don't become cold or lukewarm. We stay hot. And when you stay hot, you're able, you're ready. And you're always looking. Doesn't the word say always looking for the return of the Lord? Amen. And whatever we do, we're always trying to expand God's kingdom, whatever it is. We want to maintain a prophetic view in everything. So when the news says this, the world says this and this and that. Look, at, there are false prophets out there. And their view is demonic and corrupt. It comes out of the soul, not the spirit. They're prophesying things they have no right prophesying. God will take care of them. 
but there's a prophetic view by the Spirit because there are prophets that God has raised up to release a prophetic view. Amen? Those are true prophets of the Lord. And they are preparing God's people for what's coming. That is important. So when you receive that, there's a revelation that's brought to you and it maintains. Because it's not a seed of corruption, it's a seed of righteousness. And that seed will grow and will allow you to see things that you didn't see before. It's important that we consider always handing over and surrendering our imagination to the Lord. Lord, take this imagination, clean it up so that window of view can be seen by how you view things and not how I view things. Amen? Hallelujah. Romans 8. And we know all things work together to the good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to, his, to the image of his Son. In other words, how God views that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen. So we are predestined to be viewed by God as his children of righteousness through the process of regeneration by the Holy Spirit, that the world will see the true love of God, his presence and his power in his children. Now, when these things are happening with us in this process of exchange, in other words, we change every time we come into God's presence. You may think, well, I don't feel it. It's got nothing to do with how you feel. In fact, it's got nothing to do with how you think. You're changing whether you know it or not. Hello. And whether you want it or not. <laughs> every time you get in God's presence, something happens. Every time. So in that, you never leave with empty-handed. There's something that gets imparted in you. That will come up. It may not come up for a day. It may not come up for a month. In fact, it may not come up for a year. There's things that have come up 15 years later. I'm thinking, whoa, Lord, why didn't you tell me that 15 years ago? It wasn't time yet. So even when you pray in tongues, you're, you're depositing mysteries of God. Many of it is prophetic views that the Holy Spirit will bring up when it's needed. See, but there's an area where you are connecting to the Spirit. You are drawing from the Spirit. And the things of the Spirit run from the throne of God. And they're imparted in you. But see, too many times people are leaving, living out of their head. They're living out of intellect. And you can't. There's a thing. Intellect is for the world, not for eternity. That's why he chose a bunch of nuts. So, <laughs> amen. We were all crazy out there, man. He chose the unwise. He chose all of us so that we could be changed into his image and likeness and the world could see him through us. Amen? But if, you ain't, if you're not willing to change in that arena and walk and be exchanged in that meeting place, the world will still see you. Amen? There'll be people that come across your path you haven't seen in years. Man, you're different. Yes. You're different, man. They may see other things, and, and don't get me wrong about the knowledge, revelation. See, there's revelation knowledge, and there's just knowledge. The world can't get revelation knowledge. They can only get knowledge. And knowledge will puff a person up. Revelation knowledge will humble a person. Hallelujah. Joel 2. Maintain a prophetic view. So we need to maintain this prophetic view in everything that's happening. In other words, in, in this prophetic view, you're, you're always asking, Lord, what do you see? What do you see? 
And you're not going to have that without getting to God's presence enough and having a relationship. Joel chapter 2. In verse 28, let's speak it together. Everybody there? And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall what? Prophesy. How are you going to prophesy without a prophetic view? Hello? Your old men shall dream dreams. as dreams prophetic views? Yes. Your young men shall see visions. Praise God. I'm glad I still have dreams. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So we see this is vital. Dreams, visions. They'll be released in prophetic views by the Spirit of God. So his children will see as he sees. Um, you know, one of the greatest things, the desires of a parent is that their children see what they see. Amen? Because they want to train them up in their ways. You know, and then there's sometimes it's like, well, man, why didn't you see what I see? Even in, 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 in the workforce and so forth, Paul said something very powerful. He said, I couldn't find anybody like-minded. I only had Timothy out of everyone that was like-minded. What? So he was the only one that saw the way Paul saw things. Prophetic views. God wants us to have a live a life Maintaining the prophetic view of everything. Hallelujah. Now, as his children, we should see what he sees in time, in purpose, in destiny, in call, in warnings, and preparations. Many are not able to maintain a prophetic view of all things, not knowing we are in a time of prophetic release. We are in a moment of change. We are in a moment of transition. We are in a moment of gathering. We are in a time of fulfillment <laughs> that was prophesied by the seers of the true prophets from before and are now being spoken. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 6. It says, How will we speak wisdom among those who are mature, to those who have understanding? Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. For whose glory? Ours. These mysteries are prophetic views. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? His spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. That means these are revelations from God Almighty. They bring prophetic view. Amen. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so no one knows the things of, of God except for the spirit of God. Now we have not received. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. But the spirit who is from God. That we might what? Know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with the spiritual. Again, to maintain a prophetic view, you must know prophetic prophecy spoken by the prophets of old, and now by the personal revelation of the Spirit of Christ in dreams and visions and granted to you. But you must ask for them. God doesn't release anything unless you ask for it. Amen. There must be a desire to want it. Lord, please grant me revelation today. Grant me the eyes to see what you want me to see. Amen? If you're not asking for it, you don't get it. Again, in Proverbs 29, 18, you don't have to go over there. It says where there's no revelation, there's no resistance or no restraints. Amen? To what? The deception of evil and a deceptive view. 
Perception is a view. How you perceive things is a view. It can easily become corrupted by lack of revelation. Acts 16. Acts 16 and verse 6. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia, the region of Galatia, they had forbidden, they were what? Forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Hello. They wanted to go out. Remember, Jesus commissioned everybody to go out. Amen? See, some people, they'll just go out and do whatever when God didn't send them. And it won't be accounted to them. Only things that God sends you to do is accountable. They are accounted. They are credited. Anything a person does without God's direction, it's not accounted, credited. So the Holy Spirit said, no, don't go in Asia. After that, they had come to Mysia. They tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. Another place they tried to go in, and the Spirit said, what? No. So passing by Messiah, they came down to Tross. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Does everybody see that? See, without true direction from the Lord, there's a labor in vain. Amen? And it's important that we have that. Again, the Spirit blocked and then the Spirit led. By what? Prophetic view and a what? Dream. Amen? A vision. Through a clean conscience and imagination. Paul was able to see it. Numbers 33. Hallelujah. I think if everybody was walking in a prophetic view, the body would not be so messed up. Hallelujah. Numbers 33, 51. Let's speak it, please. <clears throat> Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their engraved stones. Destroy all their molded what? Images. And demolish all their high places. You shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it, for I have given you the land to what? Possess. Now, this is powerful because he's saying, listen, I want you to drive out, destroy anything that imitates and defiles the Creator's view. Does everybody get it? In other words, that's not what God's view is. If it's not God's view, it's to be destroyed. That defiles the Creator's view. And he says, that's the only way that you're going to be able to go in and possess so what he's saying, look, you must remove all of these things so that you can possess. So even in ourselves as a temple, there are, we are made of members. Paul talks about our members. And in our members, in our body, in our soul, in our thinking, in our attitude, and in our motives and desires and all of these things, he's saying you need to drive out anything 
It is a corruptible image. Hello? So that you can view things. Now, they must be driven out and destroyed before he can place a pure, I want to say, port of view. It's a prophetic view. See, some people are not seeing correctly because there's still areas in them that they haven't cleaned out yet. Pride is a killer, man. That will blind you like crazy. That will prevent you from seeing truly what is. And there may be pride in the members. There may be corruptible seeds. There may be certain other things that are still in there. Unforgiveness. So for all of these, anything that is causing the wrong view. It's not God's view. We want to live a life where we see what God sees then let me ask you this. If you see what God sees, do you think you might know what you should do that pleases Him? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10. Glory. 2 Corinthians 10. In verse uh, 3, we've gone over this multiple times. For though we walk or live in the physical, we do not war according to the physical. For weapons of our warfare are not physical, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Now, a stronghold is a memory lie. Does a memory have an imagination? Yes. It's a prophetic. So what we want here then is an area to where we must cast down these things. Just like we talked about casting out. Amen. Casting down these false views. These corruptible views that are offensive to God. And pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought or every part of an imagination into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Casting down, driving out demonic views of knowledge and its images of imagination that cause corruptive bondage of deception. Go to Daniel 10. Just a simple, short teaching today. We have 40 scriptures left. We'll be all right. <laughs> Don't get that view, all right? It's okay. You're all right. I wonder how many people's worst first thought came up. <laughs> Daniel. Daniel 10. Glory to God. Let's speak it. Suddenly what? A hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O oh, Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking these, this word, I stood trembling. And then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for the first day that you what? Set your heart to understand. Look here, when you want to understand something, you want to see something. Does everybody get it? And to humble you, you before your God. So Daniel was not prideful. He was humble. So a prophetic view was coming. I have, become, I have come because of your words. Since the moment we heard you, that you set your heart to understand and you humbled yourself. Does everybody get it? But the prince of the kingdom of Persia was stood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief priests, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia, which are principalities. Now I have come to make you what? Understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. 
For the vision refers to many days yet to come. So is this what God wanted Daniel to see? Why? Because it was a prophetic vision, wasn't it? This is what God sees. This is what God wanted Daniel to see. Does everybody get it? But he wanted him to have understanding. To see something without understanding will not accomplish much. Now, we know something's going to happen, and, and it's going to be fulfilled. I, had a, I was taken in a dream, and, uh, and I've, you probably, I've shared this multiple times, and I was on a horse in the ocean. And for me, it was real as can be. And we were riding on the ocean, on the water. And I seen the horse decided to go over to this big naval ship. And on the side of the ship, there was a hull that was bent open. And it was sinking. And a horse decided to go bump it. And close up the hull that was ripped open. And I was amazed. I'm thinking, man, am I going to get hurt? I wasn't hurt at all. Every time the horse hit it, he would hit it in the front part of his, I guess his shoulder, whatever you want to call it. You know, whatever. <laughs> he didn't use his tail or his head. He uses his shoulder and his arm. You know, and, uh, anyways. And it closed up. But once he completed that, he took off. And I'm still on the horse. I had no understanding what the heck was going on. The only thing I heard then was a voice that came, was released from heaven said, Guy, will you die for me? And I said, Yes, Lord. And the horse took off and went between two destroyers and poof, we were gone, man. Whew. And the next thing I know, it started raining oil. And I began to suffocate. And I woke up. I said, what was that? I never got an answer. I waited. About a few days later, whatever it was, on the news, one of our ships had got hit by Yemen. A bomb, uh, uh, one of those small sh boats went up to the ship, exploded, killed so many people, the ship started sinking, and so forth. And I thought, wow. After that, I understood, pray, protect. So then I got other visions and dreams, and I began to intercede for them. But in the beginning, I didn't understand. I saw the submarine get caught in the keys. Come to find out it was a Russian submarine that came to the surface. In our own Florida Keys. Again, in this, it was a prophetic view, but it can come through dreams and vision. I had multiple things to that degree. And there were things that were to share and things that were not to share. And this is what, that's your relationship with the Lord. Even in many of the teachings, I'll get a prophetic view. I may not understand it. It may be a glimpse. Something may come across my path. And it's like, sometimes you have to grab hold of it and wait for it to bring understanding in a prophetic view. But we want it, Lord, what do you want me to see? Because you released it. There's something you want me to see, what you see. What is it? Again, right now is a, such a time that we have a prophetic view of all things. Everything that's going on in business, in relationships. And everything that's happening around us, in health, in the medications, in the medias, we need to have a prophetic view in everything, knowing that the enemy is going to try to alter the view that God is releasing to you. Amen? He's trying to corrupt it. And he's trying to put his view in everything. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, let's go to Ephesians 1. You know, when you think about this, what did Jesus always say to the prophets? What do you see? <laughs> Why? Because he already showed them something. Now he wants to make sure that they saw what he saw. And that's what he used to say to me. What do you see, guy? Then he'd say, what would you do? Of course, I wouldn't answer. He said, whatever you want. 
Then he made me accountable. He said, I've shown you enough things, now what would you do? Then I had to tell him what I would do. And he was, he was causing me to practice what the prophetic view was to see if I was catching the same view that he wanted me to catch. Does everybody get it? And he wants you to do the same thing. In verse 15, please. Ephesians 1, 15. Let's speak it. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the what? Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, if there's, remember, this is true prophetic revelation. Now look at verse 18. That the eyes of your what? Understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In other words. The eyes of understanding are your prophetic view. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. According to the working of his mighty hand. See he wants us to see this. Understand this. Because he's talking about us. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all the things to the church. Which is his body, the fullness of him who is, who fills all in Oh, again, he wants us to have the prophetic view that he sees of who we truly are and everything that we do. Amen? Eyes of understanding, becoming open to the prophetic view of all things <laughs> for just a time as this as we need now. Amen? Let's go to uh, Zechariah 5. Verse 1. Zechariah 5, verse 1. Let's speak it. Then I turned and raised my eyes and saw there a flying scroll. And he said to me, what do you see? So I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubits and its width 10 cubits. Then he said to me, this is the curse that goes out over the face of the whole earth. Every thief shall be expelled. I want you to know that this is released now. Every thief shall be expelled according to this side of the scroll. And every perjurer shall be expelled according to that side of the scroll. So I will send out the curse, says the Lord of hosts. It shall enter the house of the thief and the house of one who swears falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of his house and consume it with its timber and stones. So we see here that this is a prophetic release from God as a, as a curse of judgment. And in this, it's going through the whole earth, which we know right now exposing corruption. It's happening right now. We're in it. That's why you and I must have a prophetic view of all things. And I'm going to close in 1 Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. Verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Let's speak it, please. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you my, a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptibly. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Haiti, where is your victory? 
The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And we shall be changed. It is the time for a prophetic view in all things. Amen? Don't let the enemy deceive you. Now, I want to speak a prayer here. Praise God. If you have your prayer booklet, you're more than welcome to speak it with me. Thank you, Lord. It is a... Uh, uh, dimensional warrior, if it's in here. Or... 40? I got 4, 40, and 54. If you got it, let's go there. Are you a warrior? Yeah. And we're going to proclaim it. Praise God. You can repeat it after me if you want. If you don't have your booklets, which you should. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. I am strong in grace. I am a leader that is being led, and I desire to lead others. I am always waiting for the next command to obey. I do not respond to reason or to a lack of understanding, but I'm willing to submit to the next command, command with all trust. I see hardship as an advancement of the kingdom, and I do not engage myself with worldly lusts, emotions, words, vows, traditions, cultures, or fantasies. I am cultivated by the eternal kingdom, knowing the world is pollution to the purity of who? Christ. I strive for perfection, order, stability, unity, steadfastness, and honor to my king, always focusing on pleasing my God and rightly interpreting his words according to his time and season. I am empowered with grace to advance beyond one's limitations. I am a scatterer of evil and a gatherer of righteousness. I am a king to my territory and a priest to my God. I am loyal, royal, immovable to the cause of the eternal order. I am nameless, faceless, and placeless generation. I am dead, but yet live. I am a child of the Most High, a child of the light, a drinker of the eternal river. I am a seer of all things to come and fearless against the darkness. I am a history maker, restorer of the breach of love, and cloaked with humility. I am chosen to be a protector of my border and a destroyer of demonic immigration. I am a defender of the weak, invader of the rescue, and teacher of the truth. I am born of the Spirit and called before time. I am armed and dangerous. I am a third-dimensional warrior. In Jesus' mighty name, for it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. You get an opportunity, make that confession today. Amen? Because we are also prophetic seers. It's important. What a time for now to this be happening. There is a great release. A great release. And the curse is on the earth. And God is moving. Judgment is here. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect the seed that's been imparted. And quicken us to the reality of seeing the things that you want us to see. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.